Good morning, friends. Welcome to my channel, Joy of the World. I am Melissa Joy. And if you're new here, this is not typical. They're asking me to share something personal. So this is personal. Um, you're welcome to stay tuned in. If uh, you've been here before, again, same caveat. <laughs> I try and keep my channel as professional as possible. That's the Capricorn part of me. I've got really strong Capricorn. It's my sun and I have uh, Mercury right next to it. So I, I, uh, my focus is being a clear channel and focusing on the intent and purpose, which is to bring joy to the world and to um, help encourage your joy to rise up and come to the forefront and be the fuel of your life. So I've been resistant. I know we're not supposed to be and practicing all sorts of things and just trying to keep it to myself, keep it to myself, keep it to myself. <laughs> I'll do this on my own. But there's a darkness that is pervasive and apparently it's over the whole world. And um, when I choose to trust the greater good and share my situation, share my questions, <laughs> my need instead of my answers and provision, huh? There's something there and uh, hopefully I will post this instead of just locking it back in the vault, keeping it to myself as I continue to work to try and put my star together. And what they were telling me is that uh, there's no work to do on my star it's already there. It's who I am. And I'm going through this experience. And uh, my older son was not born mentally disabled or challenged or anything like that. He was um, actually the one percentile of Mensa. So you could go, woo, well, she's pregnant. No, no, no. People are really high level and intelligence can struggle in this modern world because it's built for normal. It's built for average. And what is normal? Taking all the vastness of life and uh, cutting it in half and moving it down to the middle. It looks like taking this tree and blowing it down and putting it through a grinder and making it into matchsticks and pencils. They all look the same. But the beauty, the life, the individuality dissipates and disappears. So I guess I'll stand out here and share my heart. <laughs> you can look how reluctant I am to get into that, but they're asking me to open up, open up the door to my heart because it's valuable. And so having been through a lot, well, in my whole life, <laughs> I kept holding on to the vision of you guys and this seed in this dream that see, good morning. Hi, dear. He's like, she's on the shore today. What's she doing? Good morning, Bella. Hi, hi. Um, that kept me going because I believed beyond myself. I knew that there was something, a vision bigger than me. I just knew I had a seed, a seed in a dream to see the world come to life, come to color. When I saw Wizard of Oz as a little girl, they still had black and white TVs and black and white movies. So it wasn't odd for me uh, watching it by myself about age seven, seven, eight, something like that. And watching it come back from a commercial and it's in color and there's all this magic going on and of course there was darkness tucked away in the folds of the story but eventually Dorothy who had lost her mother right returns back to her world with color with inspiration in her heart so that kept me going in the midst of that I had children um, I experienced abuse they experienced abuse spiritual abuse I mean, that contains many elements of them all. And it's kind of like, like this, right? And it's not like, woo, joy. You know, we've all been there. But we were targets and I can't understand um, the level of excuse it requires to do that. So anyways, fast forward. They're 23 and 26 right now. And um, I'm a single mother. <laughs> and you're, you're like, what do you do, enjoy? Well, in 2020, uh, yeah, what a year, huh? 
my older son um, fractured the back of his skull and his arm on a skateboard on our bridge. It's a big arc. And when he was going down, coming back from work at the end of the day, uh, he hit a piece of gravel and that was it. And he said he was flying off the bridge, but somehow in his mind, he threw his body the other direction and into the road and totally knocked him out because he woke up looking at a tire at his face. And uh, so the story really unfolds there and, and did a lot of therapy and work because I'm a massage therapist and energy worker and have this special laser that I can use for people with head injuries and um, got them, I'd say about 90% better, 90% of what people consider average, which for him <laughs> was a big fall, right? Like me, I experienced TBI 21 years ago. I have about 18% eight, functioning, big fall. <laughs> Life used to be so easy and effortless. There's the dolphins making their way in. So if they come in close, I may jump off. But uh, not trying to delay it. So anyways, in uh, late 2020, I met who would end up becoming my husband. Um, and it was really weird because I didn't feel like I wanted to marry him. I felt like I was being pulled in beyond my control. It was very odd. And all my friends who are very astute people thought he was great and uh, he's really good on the outside but once it gets you locked behind those doors man crazy stuff happens and uh, in April of 2021 yeah he beat my son I'd say half to death but most to death blood shooting everywhere all over the couch uh, I called the ambulance and then of course the police came and he told them he was attacking me I told them he wasn't he told them he struck me I told them he didn't and uh, he had this bent towards getting him out of the house because then he could really suck me down and kill my joy. That's the spirit that has been against the world here, the darkness, it's called a kill joy. Because joy is our greatest power, it is our delight, right? It's like this, it's that beauty, it's that sunshine, y'all. We all come from the sun. They're jumping and playing. Oh, and they're close knit and tight together. So anyways, I have this personal and private dream for my family to be whole, my two sons and me, right? Not like living under the same roof and all that, but um, healed from all this. I know why everything came after them because I've had this dream. I mean, at two years old, that's, if you wonder where my scar came from, I was going out to minister to a neighbor to put, spread the love of God, right? And that's what I call it. I never, my, my parents didn't go to church. I just knew it was God. And no one had told me but just tell people about how magical they are and the hope that's there and the life and the happiness springing up every day when I'd wake up, it'd still be there. Even though my father was a very angry and hateful and bitter, bitter person, you know, it's just I'd wake up and it'd be there again. It'd be sucked out throughout the day and then I'd wake up and there it was again, right? But that's as early as age two. I can't remember ever not knowing God. And I had this belief that somehow I'd color the world with love. And just like my channel starting back each time I'm reaching out, it's like getting beat down again. And it's something bigger than me, which is why I'm asking for your help. If you're given to prayer or meditation or sending love out into the world and to people, I would ask you to send it to me for the courage to keep going and the strength to trust and not like tenacity strength our, our joy is our strength y'all and um I had so very little energy after going through all that cancer treatment and the abuse and then when I started the channel back again right vertigo smacked me down never had it it was so clinical like I was laying in the floor for two months barely moving and then that led to the kidney thing and the operation I had to have and all that stuff and so still coming out of that Meanwhile, praying and hoping for my son, my other son. Yeah, he's in a he's in a different kind of darkness, um, but not quite as dangerous. So, uh, slapping their tails, the dolphins. Hi. So, anyways, when we pour forth our heart, we're pouring forth that dolphin spirit to pray for my playfulness, to pray for my son, and um, they keep injecting him and. 
is taking these drugs and it only makes it worse. They are not listening that it is physical. It is a head injury and they like to keep putting in these other categories. And anyway, so I have a behavioral place where they get them quote stable and they say they're great and they send him home and then he wasn't home. He didn't eat or drink for days and his hands and feet are swollen to double the size. I don't know if you've ever been severely dehydrated when it gets to that place the desire to drink leaves you because you're going out of this world, right? But um, he stood with his toes on the edge of the road and I mean it's, it's at a fork. It's where one lane is coming out and he's in the road and it's on the highway and it was lunch hour traffic and I stood there with him as long as I could until I couldn't take the pain anymore in my body begging him to drink. And people would just blow by us, you know, inches within us that blow my skirt up and blow my hair and, and it's gushing rain and no one cared. People look at him and say he must be on drugs. People look at him and say he must be dangerous. People look at him and say he must be schizophrenic. And the truth is we're drained, we're empty. Because when I would keep going, that thing would smack my children down even when they were little. I went beyond, like, people who have this level of brain injury usually are dead by now. Mine, that is. But I've lived off of hope and the sunshine and this love that I feel inside. Trying to make it to y'all to get this vision out to the world, to change our world. Actually, to restore our world, our people back to their nature, their human nature, human beings. The compassion and care and uh, I remember when people used to slow down to get an animal out of the road and here they were not even like easing out of the lane to not run him over <laughs> and yes I listen back to these videos and they've been giving me insight to keep hanging on and keep going without stifling any of the magic but also not being snuffed out by this heavy hand. So anyways, the police where we live, fairly small town, they, they love him and they love me and they kept calling me to go pick him up and I physically can't. I mean, he's he's tall, he's six foot two and, and so they helped me get him in the car and we put the child locks on in the back because I picked him up earlier and could only make it to the red light before he got out. Because you see people, these are the distractions that I'm facing. I need your help. Because I believe together we're better. I don't, I've run out of power. <laughs> uh, the little bit I have is taking too long to regrow and it starts to grow a bit and then that comes again and I believe in miracles, y'all. A miracle is defined as a work of power. So my son's name is Gray, which used to include my other son. His name is John Mark. And uh, hey, uh, thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for considering us worthy of your time and your prayers and believing in this channel, that joy to the world. Okay. I guess today a vote for me is a vote for yourself. I love you.